Welcome. A myriad of visual, artistic, and gustatory delights await you in Gentil Dumaguete. And as you gently contemplate your day, you find yourself thinking, Dumaguete will surpass your expectations. Oh, Dumaguete City, lots of fun, lots of memories. And most of my life I've been studying here just 13 kilometers away from my hometown to this day. A mild disclaimer here, I'm not an architect, at least not yet. Because here I came with another issue that represents nothing more than the imminent uglification of a city. And the future really is ugly. Speaking of which, it's not wrong to envision the future which depends on the type of vision we want to see. But now I see what that vision is, all I have to say is... What the fuck? Jesus Christ. And I'm going to apologize already for starting this video by remembering that time since November of last year. When someone vehemently planned to put an 18-story tower in the center of Quezon Park. Yeah. That. That's where all the travesty begins and that's where we all know that Dumaguete is about to be desecrated. What exactly? How tall was it? The height data is incomplete except that we've been given about 18 to 19 stories tall if you include the apex. Multiply it times the average story height according to the National Building Code of the Philippines, which is supposed to be no less than 2.4 meters. But let's just round that up to an average of 3 meters per story. That would give us the height of 57 meters compared to the belfry which is only a roughly of 18 meters. And the distance between the proposed site and the belfry is only more than 60 meters. Which is still a bad space margin that even my physics professor says that the city will be congested with attention seeking landmarks in one place. Because we all have the instincts that determines the beautiful, the ugly, and basically looking for the convenience of the environment. Well I'm sorry, it's not a tower, it's an obelisk. But the last time I've seen an obelisk work in the center of the park was the Washington Monument itself in the National Plaza of Washington DC. It worked because the park was massive. It worked because it had a brilliant urban planning. It worked because the landmarks were evenly spaced so as not to compete the attention against each other. Oh don't take my word for it. These are from the words of two local architects of the province who pointed out its problems in a Facebook post. I even remember my architecture instructor giving his opinion about the tower after class. He said that the guys behind the project should have read history. In other words, it has no traditional aesthetics whatsoever. Well this is not exactly a good spot to put this hideous monstrosity now is it? And whose idea was this? The said obelisk is a 100% donation by the Oi Piching family. And it's called the Masonic Obelisk because it's donated by a family of Freemasons. Who gives a shit about the Freemasons? The Philippines is 90% Catholic like me and so is everyone else. A big landmark for the Mason. God of mercy. Isn't it evident enough about the audacity of these twats is to place it right in front of the cathedral, you complete morons. According to an article, a parish priest immediately hits back against this project because this Masonic activity conflicts and contradicts against the church rather architecturally. However, Uy Piching said that he intends the obelisk to be an attraction to visiting tourists and guests. Yeah, there's definitely something attractive about this disastrous piece of crap just to feed the ego of some random rich dad bod. Fuck off! So therefore, the Dumaguete Cathedral's Parish Pastoral Council signed a letter of petition to the National Historical Commission against this proposal. Immediately, the NHC replied that they're not against the project, but rather they suggested another option that is to relocate the project to a different site. Now where would that newly proposed site be located? The Rizal Boulevard. Of course it's the Rizal Boulevard. I mean what could even be more worse than casting a shadow over the city, just so that everyone could see one man's pleasure over everyone else's misery. Coming soon in 2023! Which finally brings me to the issue that persuaded me to make a video about how our city is slowly being stripped away of its identity. The 174 hectare coastal project. Which is what definitely scares me the most is how they presented this proposal I discovered is littered with hundreds of soulless buildings, which makes it look like a replica of Singapore by my own words in Dubai according to the netizens of Twitter. Because I doubt it. I doubt that for the next 10 years the Philippines will ever going to have the economy to be able to accommodate all this shit. This is not Makati city either. We don't need skyscrapers. And hopefully not. Now to be clear, this video is not to encourage everyone to actually hate on the project without breaking it down properly what the project is all about. But to my research, I discovered a video presentation in courtesy of the Dimonquete Public Information Office. Link in the description. The reclamation project primarily features the additional 174 hectare island-like shoreline with seawalls first and foremost. I also then encircled the scale of the Rizal Boulevard just to get a picture of how exactly massive this is. It also features helipads, yacht clubs, and whatever the hell this is, because the audio got cut off halfway through the video. The project may be already terrible for a start, but also the presentation is absolute garbage. And what the flying fuck is this? Is this supposed to be a shittier version of Marina Bay Sands Hotel from Singapore? <laughs> 
how original, how intelligently and beautifully designed. Bravo, guys. Bravo. <laughs> and this. It's actually a reference to the new Manila Bay City, which is their own version of these so-called smart cities. Which looks like a screenshot of Sim City or City Skylines. And maybe because that's how they basically get their ideas from. Urban planning in a video game, always in an instant. And of course, it's skyscrapers made of glass. Why does high-rise buildings always have to be glass? It has no soul, it has no aesthetic value, it's a dead husk of a product in the globalist industry. However, they didn't say anything about skyscrapers in Dumaguete per se. But I still have a bad feeling about this. After being made mention that they want to extend Dumaguete as a so-called smart city. And smart cities are products of globalist industries that slowly eats away the traditional beauty of whichever city they want to upgrade. Because modernist and postmodernist architecture is ugly. Namely, they will add malls, hotels, condominiums, perhaps a new hospital or two, you name it in the name of modernization. Brilliant! And I found all of these from Facebook pages of radio stations and there were no public announcements whatsoever. That may be due to the ongoing pandemic, fine. However, the project's contract signing of a joint venture agreement will be held exactly in 5 days after its first social media announcement coming this Monday. That's incredible! They used this tactic because obviously they inherently knew that everyone would hate it. So they didn't give us the chance to stop or give time to petition against any project that desecrates the original image of the city. But it looks like everyone's already pissed off. This is not to say that Dumaguete City has never had its successful preservations and renovations of the past. And one of those examples is the renovation of the 1940s Tevez Mansion in the Rizal Boulevard that is now currently transformed into a grill restaurant and a Starbucks shop. Oh, and I also made a drawing about it in my architecture class. The meaning of history may say that time always moves forward and that everything changes in the flow of time. But that's not to say that the past will be erased because the past always matters and the past reminds us of our identity, culture, and tradition not only to the people but the place itself. And this is why we have tourism to show the world who we really are. The city of Dumaguete belongs to its people. It doesn't belong to the government officials to do whatever they want with it. What belongs to these government officials, however, is the responsibility of being transparent with its people. I hope I'm wrong. I hope there's more to this. And take note that the contract signing is coming this Monday, July 12th. In case if I am too late uploading this video. Which begs me to question why. What is all this for? Aesthetic purposes? Modernization? Or better yet, are the citizens of Dumaguete City economically or even spiritually ready for this? Or better yet, are we even ready to abandon our old traditional memories and images of the city that deserve much of its preservation? Tourists love this place because of its inherent image and to destroy that image is to destroy the fabric of tourism itself. Brilliant! Not only that, but the ecosystem, the marine life, the corals will be destroyed. This is monstrous! It may be ironic that I do not live in Dumbaguete city but in the municipality of Dawin which is only a dozen kilometers south of the city. But I had the opportunity to study in Siliman University for the past 16 years. Oh, you want proof? Here it is. Therefore, I have every right to put my perspective on this in the addition of all others just to represent how the public unanimously reacts to this steaming pile of dog shit. Even my university professors have started petitioning against it, most of which are environmental activists. Modern architecture has no soul. It destroys traditional cultural beauty and identities of places all for the sake of globalist dystopian goals. It may have been already too late to say this as the project goes underway in 3 years time, but that's just the extension of the shoreline and groundwork. What about the future buildings? Because there are only two choices that the future of our city will follow. Either it will be that we can still remain stagnant but preserving the very identity of our city by designing places that doesn't adhere to globalist goals. Or the rapid modernization and industrialization by desecrating the very identity of our place and its people. Reject the global, revere the local. As I close this video, let me read a single comment after making a tweet about it that summarizes all of this. Looks like a Chinese city. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. There is also a link to an ongoing petition which I put in the description. So sign it, share it, Francis out. Sa dumagete kali